All right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin. And last time we were in here, we took this lid and we kind of recharged it by putting more cocoa choir inside here. It had been about two and a half years since I got the Vermi Hut and it just needs some more in there. We also gave a pretty big feeding right down here in the center. We had put in several avocado peels, some banana peels, some slices of tomatoes and tangerine peels, along with some broccoli stems, carrot tops, several mushrooms in a pear. And it was full all the way to the top, but you can see it is sunk down right here. So what we're going to do is kind of go inside and what we are going to feed them today is kind of a unique thing we're going to do. We are going to feed them on the top only and not bury it, but check out these worms right here in the center of this feeding zone. And I smell just a hint of citrus from those tangerines that we put in there. And right here is an avocado peel. They love to hide in there. So I'm just gonna kind of dig it out and see what we got going. And sure enough, right inside there, I don't know if you can see, there are just tons of worms. We've got some babies, juveniles, some bigger ones, but for some reason, they really enjoy going inside the avocado peel. So I'll just kind of put this to the side and let's keep on digging in here. Now I checked at about the two day to three day mark and I didn't feel any heat, which I was surprised because we did put a lot of food. And I think it didn't heat up just based on the kind of food we put in there. We put a lot of fast food in and just a little bit of slow food. We also, as you can tell, have just a lot of worms in here. I estimate somewhere around four to 5,000. So they eat the food pretty quick before it can heat up. And here we go, another avocado peel full of worms. All right, we'll keep going along here. And I'm really excited to do this new feeding because what I'm gonna do is every day, I'm just gonna pop open the lid and quickly record them and see which foods they are liking better than the others. And I've got some good stuff. I've got some watermelon, I've got some pineapple and all kinds of other stuff. And maybe we'll be able to tell what they go through and eat first. What I'm gonna do is just kind of dig around and aerate Make sure there's no pockets of fermentation or ammonia smells, and then we'll come back and set up for that feeding. It's just <laughs> right there within this broccoli stem. They eat the center of the broccoli stem out and then some of these fibers they leave, but these worms are all tangled up inside of everything that's within there. So good showing for a lot of worms. And here's one of those corn cobs. Let's kind of break it apart and see if there's any worms inside. And this will also help to kind of let them eat it, create more surface area here. And sure enough, we've got one worm in there making a home out of it. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm not sure how much you can tell, but I've got about an inch to half an inch on the side right here. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of bedding on top and then we will start our feeding. So in goes just a little bit of bedding. I always like to add a little carbon with all the nitrogen that I'm adding into the bin. And I want to make sure that we're not making a little compost pile in here. So with this spread out feeding, there should be no worries with that. So here are a couple of the foods that we had in mind. I've got the bottom part of a watermelon and I've got a pineapple bottom. And we're just going to put that right on top and maybe we'll be able to see which one they go for first. And I know a lot of people say don't put pineapple in, but I'm going to show you that eventually they will get to it. It's a slow food, but they will get to it. And this is certainly a fast food. Now, all this food I put in here has been previously frozen. I let it thaw a little bit, but it didn't get quite as thawed as I wanted. As I wanted. But we've got some bright lights on here and the worms are making their way down. We're also going to put in some berries and again, frozen. And we'll see how much they like these berries as well. It's going to be really fun to see. I think what I'm going to do is every day pop off that lid and maybe do like a one minute time lapse just to see where the worms are going for. And then let's pick up pick out some good stuff from here. We've got a banana peel, we've got some tangerine peels. This is, looks like an apple core. And then we've got some carrot stalks right here. And we've even got some flowers, that should be neat. And we've got some celery, some grapes, more celery, a little piece of onion. And what do you think? Maybe we do another flower. So let me kind of arrange this real quick and we will get it all set up and maybe add a little bit more food. Wow, that's amazing. Is it cool looking? That's a lot. And then I've got a little bit of both sweet potato and regular potato, and I think I'll put those right over here. I think carbs can tend to heat up a bin, so maybe we'll see if we generate any heat right here. But I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to skip the amendments because this is a really colorful arrangement. And I don't want to put any of that stuff on because I want to see where the different worms are going to come and attack first and we'll really be able to tell what's fast food or kind of what the worms eat the quickest so this should be really fun you know what i'm going to do right now 
I'm going to go to the future and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the first two days. So there you go. Pretty interesting, huh? So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your warm bins are doing well. So happy from composting, everybody. Take care now.